Hello and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. I'd like to greet new subscribers. Thank you for joining this channel. I'd like to greet old subscribers. Thank you for hanging in there. Today I continue with the America series of prophecies, but let's just get the usual out of the way. Please pause the video and check the description box to see what the video is about if you haven't done that already. If you're somebody who's coming from the blog to watch the video, I would also like to mention that after you watch the video, please do read the prophecy because I think that reading helps us to get a more settled idea of what the Lord is trying to say to us. If the video is grainy, please check the three dots menu at the top or I think the YouTube menu at the bottom, you'll see a little cog. Just make sure that you check the word quality and put it in 780p or 1080p so that you have a better quality video to watch. So today I continue with the theme of proclaiming um, war. The Lord has said that war will definitely come to the United States. The Lord has said that America will no longer be a nation. The Lord has said that he will, as a man grabs someone by the lapel and drags him down in a fight that is stronger than he can resist, the Lord said that he will drag America down from her first place. There are many prophecies on the blog showing, I think, insights and snippets into how the Lord has said that he will do this. So before actual war comes, before this final uh, destructive blow, as it were, that will be served by the foreign nations of Russia and China, probably at the very end of America's tenure as a nation, there will come many different things. I think in the prophecy uh, cockfight, I shared about an upcoming skirmish with Iran. And there's other prophecies on the blog that over time, I, Celestial, myself, because I do, I do revisit and I do study these prophecies, um, let it be understood that there is no part of me that thinks, oh, because the Lord is giving me these things that I, I don't need to study them. I believe that prophecy forms a very important part of the scripture, not only in the old times when prophecy was initially given, but even now. There's a lot of people who argue that there are no need for prophets. There's a lot of people who say that prophecy is not for today. I find both of these views very interesting and I'm sure the Lord does too, because he continues to isolate certain people and share his mind with them. And not only that, he continues to download to these people pertinent information that is very much for today. So without further ado, we're going to go into a tiny piece of scripture that the Lord keeps giving me. This is from Isaiah chapter 9. I have several prophecies on the blog containing this snippet, and the snippet is simply this. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So I shared that this piece of scripture simply means, when someone says for all this, it, it's a phrase of English that means before you get here, before you get to the point that says for all this, there was stuff that came before. So if you look in Isaiah 9, one of the things is the Lord sent a word against Jacob and it fell on Israel. And by this, all the people will know those who live in Ephraim and those who inhabit Samaria, who speak in the pride and the arrogance of their heart. They say, the bricks have fallen down but we will rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Now, this is basically the, the nation of Israel saying at that time, yes, our enemies did come against us. Our enemies whipped us and our enemies broke down many of our edifices. They threw down the bricks that we had used to build previously but I tell you, we will arise greater than before. This time, we're going to rebuild with precisely cut stones. So we're going to rebuild even better than bricks. Yes, 
They cut down the sycamores, meaning that our precious trees that had been growing for probably hundreds of years um, were cut down by the invaders. But I tell you, we will replace them with planting even better trees, cedars. I'm sure you hear a lot about the cedars of Lebanon, how majestic and tall these trees grow. So this is really a backhanded and very arrogant response of a nation that is saying, even if you fight us, and even if we as a spiritual people understand that your fighting us was because the Lord sent invaders as vengeance against us, we say to you that even after we are invaded and even after the Lord's wrath is poured out on us, we'll do better. We'll be great again. I'm sure that out there, this phrase, especially in the U.S., it touches a nerve. It's a highly, highly, highly volatile and politicized phrase. America shall be great again. What does this really mean? This means that in the perception of many people, the United States has already fallen from grace, that she's gone from being, uh, as we say, the greatest country in the world to maybe, maybe not so great. But now there's this push, there's this magnificent push that she will be great again, that she will rise from the ashes like a phoenix and find her, find her space again, find her strength. And she will sally forth, you know, she will go forth once more to battle and she will show the world why she's the red, white, and blue. And yet in the background, one voice speaks. In the background, one set of eyes watches. In the background, one person says, for all this, my anger is not satisfied, but my hand is stretched out still. Brothers and sisters, I really believe that this is a time in history that is unprecedented. Smallpox came, polio came, lots of things came. Never did it shut down the world the way the world has been shut down now. 2020 has been a year not for you to panic, lose your mind, uh, give up on life. A lot of people have lost their lives in this pandemic. A lot of people lost the ability to get proper health care because everybody was so focused on COVID that people who had other real and legitimate illnesses, heart attacks, congenital heart problems, congenital breathing problems, you know, cancer. These people were not able to get the help that they need and tragically they passed away. They lost their hold on life. Many people lost their jobs. Many people lost the security that they always trusted in. Many people had to rely on their savings. I know people who had to rely on their savings and guess what? Savings are never what you think they are. So those savings are gone. And... Now we've come to a place where I think we need to reflect. We need to ask ourselves, what's really going on here? We need to ask ourselves, yes, I had faith and yes, I trusted God in March when the lockdowns were first announced, but now it's November. An entire year has passed. Some people have not been called back to work. Some businesses did not survive the pandemic. I know in my neighborhood, I see more and more businesses putting up the for sale sign. I see more and more uh, businesses, especially small businesses, mom and pop stores that have been shuttered for good. This tells me that human beings need to understand that what they think they have in reserve is not enough. I was reflecting this morning that the only thing that is really important in this life is faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. That's in Romans chapter one somewhere. To live by your faith literally means that as you rise and sleep and rise and sleep, it is only what in you reflects back to Yeshua that will save and help you. Prayer is good. Fasting is good. Reading the word of God is excellent. 
Yet if you read this word and you do not internalize it and mix it with faith, then as Apostle Paul said in Hebrews, your carcass will fall in the desert. Because if you read the Bible and retain an evil heart of unbelief, if you read the Bible but you're still trusting in your job, your boss, your savings, whatever it is, if you do not believe God himself, then when his hand is stretched out still, I don't know what you're going to do. So the prophecy for today is titled War. And I will endeavor, because I do have time today, I will t try to make more than one video. So I will try to, to make today a productive day on the master's voice. And uh, let us go straight to it. Prophecy is called War, received August 17, 2019. The banner scripture is, Then the cities that are full now will be laid to waste, and the land will become desolate, which means utterly abandoned. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 12 and verse 20. So the tone of the scripture was basically talking about, excuse me, please, the process by which a nation goes to war. No nation goes to war out of nowhere because war is so cost, cost intensive, such a heavy undertaking. And because it has the potential to cause so much devastation and damage, war is not something that leaders enter into precipitately, which means they don't just wake up and think to war, Horatio, and then just get in helicopters and um, parachutes and just take hundreds and hundreds and thousands of their young men and women, servicemen and women, and just say, let's go to another country and invade it. Let's go to this other country and bomb it. War by nature requires um, deliberation. You have to talk to the other chiefs in government. You know, what do you think chief of staff? And what do you think secretary of state? And what do you think minister of defense? There has to be, there has to be some kind of discussion. But even more than the process of how you go to war is, I think, why you go to war. So the one ingredient that is essential for war is enemies. Why? Because a war requires at least two sides. We're not talking about metaphysical wars, like when you're having a problem inside and you're struggling, should I have that next piece of apple pie or not? Should I, should I not? No, that's an internal struggle. A real war where people die and buildings are damaged and resources are both expended, which is to use up resources, and sometimes, a lot of times, especially in modern, modern wars, also stolen. Those types of wars require at least two sides. And before you have the clash of a war, someone has to be your enemy. So the primary ingredient for a war is enemies. And what the Lord made me know and understand as I wrote this prophecy, this prophecy was more of a conversation of the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to Celestial and making her to understand the process by which war comes. A nation doesn't go to war all at once. It's not possible. No matter how sudden wars appear in this modern world, nations don't just go to war. After all, war is nothing but conflict and therefore, it cannot arise without the primary ingredient for conflict, which is enemies. War without enemies is impossible. Just as you boil a stone on the fire and it won't change, in the same way, peaceful relations between the nations will not change unless you first have disagreements, then tensions, then conflicts that will definitely stir to form the essential ingredients for war. Those ingredients for war are vengeance, hatred, and enemies. So I shared in a previous prophecy, forgive me, I can't always remember what they're titled, but I shared 
uh, in a previous prophecy how I saw a vision of America depicted as a little blonde girl and the nation of Russia depicted as a, a brunette boy. They were children and the Lord showed this vision as a series of childhood games. And I saw how America always said to Russia, you're the bad guy. And then she played the role of the hero. So America would make Russia dress up like an American Indian and then she would be the cowboy. and She would shoot him and then tell him, you have to die now, fall down. So Russia always had to take the second place in these childhood games. But then the Lord progressed the vision and showed how they'd grown up. So they were 17, maybe 18 years old and they were still playing these games. And America was still taking to herself the good role and making Russia the bad guy. But I said that I saw in the heart of Russia a bright burning sun, which was a fierce pride and also anger and vengeance against America for constantly depicting herself as the good guy. So America's media is very powerful. This is a many tentacled beast that doesn't only control America here at home. Her media controls the narrative across the world. Reality is not reality. Reality is to a very large extent what America says it is. So if it's bright and sunny outside and America says it's bright and sunny outside, then it's bright and sunny outside. But when it's pouring down rain and everyone, is, everyone else is getting actually soaked with the raindrops and the water's running down our faces and we can feel there's a thunderstorm afoot. But the American media comes and says it's a nice beautiful sunny day out there people experience what is known as cognitive dissonance their physical senses tell them but it's raining but the pervasiveness of the u.s media tells us it's sunny and then people's minds begin to struggle between real reality and u.s reality and so america has used the media much to her benefit she has told people that the conflicts, the tensions, and the disagreements that she's gotten into were all justified. She's told them at times that she has a reason for doing what she does, but because of national security, she doesn't have to disclose that reason. We should trust her. We should believe that as she's invading, pillaging, raping, and taking resources, she has a good reason and that she's taking care of the bad guys. And so this has been to not only Russia's detriment, but many nations detriment. And the Lord was giving me to understand that this is why now at this critical junction in time, the United States has enemies. He said conflict by careful conflict, disagreement by disagreement, humiliation by humiliation that you served on other nations stone by stone you have made your enemies he said superior weaponry and popular opinion stood in your corner many times weapons are your language america and you trust in them and so he began to list a couple of names that the united states has in the international arena a fighter a bomber the bringer of armed soldiers, the one who sends drones, the one who drives military convoys through the streets of other nations, a gun runner, a drug dealer, an oil stealer. He says, by all these, you have ultimately become an enemy. And I said that I am not able to see how many nations really hate this country, but I know of two I know of two that the Lord has revealed to me their deep hatred for you, no matter how they smile, no matter how they say, oh, yes, yes. In the international community, they have a deep resentment for the things that you have done. Said so the Lord has refined you with fire, but you refuse to repent. He flooded your cities. He weakened your economic output, but you keep doing wrong. Even as drought fries the coastlands, you reply, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with well-cut stones. Yes, the sycamores were cut down, but we will replace them with majestic cedars. In other words, 
Whatever happened to us thus far cannot move us. We will rise up bigger and better. To this the Lord God replies, For all this, my anger is not turned away, but my hand is stretched out still. And so I would say that in the conflict of dealing with enemies, you can antagonize anyone. You can fight back to anyone. You can, you can say what you want to anyone. You can involve yourself in a, word, in a war of words, of rhetoric, threats against anyone. But do not antagonize. Do not curse at. Do not resist. And do not attempt to fight the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of hosts. For he is the Lord who makes all flesh. Do not upset him. Do not ignore his Holy Spirit. Do not throw the Lord's words aside like a cheap coat. Do not pretend that you cannot see his hand calling you to repent, to come back to him. Do not make yourself stubbornly deaf, as if there is anyone who can love you more than he. For when you do this, when you, by one disobedient act after another, make for yourself a heavenly enemy. When at last that heavenly enemy rises against you, what a terrible and bitter day that will be for you. So that is the prophecy war. I will be back with another video, hopefully soon. I am Celestial. You're always welcome to this channel. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your emails. I'm still working through them. Thank you for those who give to this channel. Your gifts are appreciated. Thank you for supporting me. You will find all the information that you need below. And God bless you and keep you. Bye.